What's up everybody, D-Man back, welcome to a brand new video, and today we're going to be doing another- Oh, wait, whoa, 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 I was going to say Godzilla vs. Kong, but that's not what this is. What's up everybody, D-Man back, welcome to a brand new video, and today we're going to be doing another Monarch news and updates. I'm going to call it Monarch until we get the official 100% confirmed title, because I think the title might just be Monarch. <laughs> Now, for those of you who remember, I actually released some videos all the way back in the day, January 2022, where I talked about this exact same stuff that I'm going to cover today. The difference is today we're going to be going over a lot more information with a lot more hindsight, but I'd highly recommend you go check out those original videos because I am so good at my job. I'm really good at this stuff. <laughs> I predicted so many things. I predicted that Toho would make another Godzilla movie. I actually said that I wasn't sure if they would, but I said, well, there's a gap between Godzilla movies. Now's the time for Toho to release a Godzilla movie. I said that I didn't think we'd see Godzilla on screen in a MonsterVerse movie again until 2024, which is just the truth. I even predicted that Warner Bros. and Legendary would break up and yet that they would keep the MonsterVerse together. I got a lot of stuff right in that video. I'm pretty proud of myself, but I genuinely would recommend going and checking those videos out because I do a lot more in-depth analysis than I'm going to do here. I break down from a business and financial perspective why these things happened and why it went down the way it did, why the MonsterVerse is going to continue, why it's going to continue in the form it is continuing in, what the TV show means for the future of the MonsterVerse from a financial and business perspective, and all of the legalities between Legendary and Warner Bros. and Toho. I'm not going to be getting into that stuff in this video, so that video still contains a bunch of content that I'm not going to be covering here, so I would recommend going and checking that video out if you haven't seen it already. This video is going to be much more from the creative side of things, talking about the insides of the Monarch TV show. I also did a follow-up video back in the day where I covered a bunch of the rumors from this video, I would also recommend going and checking that out because I give a much more in-depth explanation of what I think the story is going to be, how it would evolve, and I talk a lot about the potential to bring in great Toho actors and to use certain locations and why it could be such an amazing opportunity for the MonsterVerse. I'm not going to be talking about that in this video either. I have a lot to cover in this video, so I'm going to kind of just hit the beats and keep moving. I'm not really going to break anything down. So that video, I would also highly recommend going and checking out. The second saddest, most tragic part of that video is that in that video, I pitched that they should get Akira Takarada back very quickly because I say it in the video, he didn't have much time left and they should try and make use of him while they still can because it's what he wanted. Unfortunately, for those of you who don't know, Akira Takarada passed away, so that opportunity has passed. All right, without further ado, let's jump into this. And again, I'm going to try and just be kind of beat by beat because there's a lot to talk about. Starting now, Godzilla 2014's extended prologue was released. This is the prologue featured in the beginning montage for the movie. We have extended clips of Godzilla swimming around through the ocean. We got a bigger aspect ratio for it as well. That's very cool. But we have extended clips of Godzilla swimming around through the ocean, some extended footage of Monarch, a lot of footage of them exploring the cave with the Muto's nest. And then we also get the clip of the male Muto taking flight. A lot of this footage is seen in Godzilla 2014, but it's always seen on like screens or in the background or as part of montages where it's all like put into film frames. And so it's not quite as clear as we see it here. I particularly love watching that Muto take flight because he's so bat-like. Additionally, KDN posted two compilations on Facebook of extended clips from Godzilla 2014. Now these are extended VFX shots that are drawn out by like maybe one frame all the way to a couple seconds. So they're not really that extended. Also, they are mega, mega crunchy. I don't know why Facebook crunched the video quality so hard, but it did. I do know Rick the Squirrel has posted similar compilations though, so you can go check those out if you want to see them. I'm fairly confident this was revealed during the Godzilla 2014 watch along, but we do have a behind the scenes picture of a deleted shot from Godzilla 2014 featuring Max Bornstein and concept artist Matt Alsop. I think I said his name wrong, but Matt is an incredibly talented concept artist. He has done art for all of the MonsterVerse films and he absolutely kills it. He is responsible for designing the 2014 Godzilla, or at least has a part in designing the 2014 Godzilla, and has been responsible for helping to create concept art for some of the most iconic sequences of the MonsterVerse. KDM has now become our number one second 
secondary source for this show. Of course, our primary sources would be somebody like a director of an episode or a producer at Legendary. We don't have any contact with any of those people, but KDM is somebody who is a great secondary source posting information and teasers about the new show. Not really leaks, but teasers. He's a scooper. He's a journalist. There's a big difference between leaks and journalism, and if you don't know that difference, then I'm not going to explain it to you because it's not worth my time. All the way back in July of 2019, KDM teased a lot of information about the MonsterVerse that wound up being true. First of all, KDM teased that Toho would be involved creatively in the MonsterVerse projects post Godzilla vs. Kong. Now this shouldn't be news on the channel. I have talked about this in videos last year, and beyond that, I talked about this in 2019, but seemingly the world has forgotten that I knew this stuff. I didn't forget though. So yes, Toho would be creatively involved in MonsterVerse projects post Godzilla vs. Kong. Warner Bros. is no longer co-investing in MonsterVerse movies, they will only be taking over sales and distribution. Toho gave the green light to more Toho Kaiju, saying that the decision to use Toho monsters or create new ones is up to Legendary, the producers, and the directors, but they would still have to pay. This is also information that was reflected in another interview that a Toho executive did back in 2019, and I can link that as well. So this isn't KDM exclusive stuff, this does come from a Toho executive himself. KDM says that Toho wanted to make another live action Godzilla movie, and an animated movie. I, I think the animated movie wind up being Singular Point, and the live action movie is of course what we are getting this year. There was no plans to make a Shin Godzilla 2, and there was a Monarch show in development featuring new monsters, and it was set in the MonsterVerse. That is the biggest groundbreaking scoop that KDM got because it just wound up being true. Now it's not a hard thing to guess as I've talked about before, anybody could guess that they wanted to make this. Jumping forward to 2022, Monarch was announced in January 2022. Now it wasn't announced under the official title Monarch, but instead called Godzilla and the Titans, or at least that's all we were able to call it. The official release says we are thrilled to announce the MonsterVerse is expanding with an all-new original live-action series for Apple TV Plus featuring Godzilla and the Titans that will explore the mythic legacy of a world which monsters are real. An official press release was released by Apple TV Plus and has a lot more information, featuring a plot synopsis stating, following the thunderous battle between Godzilla and the Titans that leveled San Francisco and the shocking new reality that monsters are real, the untitled series explores one family's journey to uncover its buried secrets and a legacy linking them to the secret organization known as Monarch. That's right, this show is set as a direct sequel to Godzilla 2014, not a prequel to King of the Monsters, but a direct sequel follow-up to 2014, picking up immediately where that film leaves off. I'm very excited about that. The tease that the show will feature Godzilla and the Titans is something that a lot of people are very excited about, featuring Godzilla, of course, with brand new screen time of Godzilla doing whatever the hell he was doing in 2014, and apparently new Titans. New Titans that will either be discovered here or just straight up killed off here, which is why they're not part of the seven and counting that Sarazawa mentions in King of the Monsters. Or maybe they are, and they're just ones that we haven't read about, or have read about, but have never seen. This show will be produced by Legendary TV. It will be executive produced by Chris Black, who is the showrunner. He is famous for Mad Men, Outcast, and Star Trek Enterprise. And Matt Fraction, who is famous for the Hawkeye TV show. He was credited as a writer on that, and also he's a comic book writer who wrote the Hawkeye comic that that show is based on. This is being developed alongside Safe House Pictures, with Jobby Harold, who's famous for Obi-Wan Kenobi, John Wick 3, and Edge of Tomorrow, and Troy Tanel who's famous for Robin Hood and King Arthur Legend of the Sword. It's also produced by Toho. Hooray! Toho has more involvement this time. It is being executive produced by Hiroshi Matsuoka, who's famous for Godzilla King of the Monsters. He also produced that movie. And Takimesa Arita. A Deadline article was written about Godzilla and the Titans. That's what it officially refers to the show as here. That's not the title or anything like that, but again, at the time, that was all we knew what to call it. Legendary teamed with Apple TV Plus for the show featuring Godzilla and the Titans. That's where it comes from, because it will feature Godzilla and the Titans. Titans, which does mean Godzilla and the Titans will have screen time in this show. Apple TV jumped for this project and wanted to expand its TV slate very badly. Its other big shows are shows like C, Mythic Quest, Invasion, and Ted Lasso. Now, this is my personal analysis, but I think it's kind of unfortunate that Apple TV Plus is such a niche program. I, I don't think a lot of people subscribe to that service. That's why shows like Ted Lasso may be great, but also don't get a lot of recognition outside of that show. The people who watch it love it, but just not a ton of people see it because not a ton of people use Apple Apple TV Plus. I think it's going to really limit the audience for this show, but maybe it'll work perfectly and expand Apple TV Plus's ratings and subscribership so much that tons of people will be able to watch it. In this article, it also states that Legendary was still developing the next MonsterVerse film in conjunction with this show. Back in January 2022, D-Man got the scoop. That's right, I'm reporting on my own video. I got it confirmed that Apple TV Plus got this show because it outbid every other network to secure the rights to Monarch. They were the front runners the whole time, but it could have gone to anybody. It could have gone to Netflix or HBO Max or anybody. Apple TV Plus was the front runner and got it because they 
wanted it most badly. All right, now let's get into all the KDM stuff. KDM released a ton of information about this show at the time, and there's a lot to talk about here. First of all, KDM teases Monarch, Action, Monsters, and Godzilla. Also teasing that Legendary is still developing the new live action Godzilla film as well. KDM defends Apple TV+, Plus, stating that they have the highest production value, much, much bigger budgets than normal, and higher quality standards than any other network. So the show will turn out amazing, even if not a ton of people watch it. Also, Apple just has a ton of money to spend, so of course they're going to be able to do this. KDM teased that there will be a split between San Francisco and Tokyo, stating that one character splits his screen time between both San Francisco and Tokyo. He says, we guess you know why. I'm just going to assume that means because he's part of Monarch. Maybe it means that he's tracking Godzilla back to Tokyo, or maybe it means he's following the path that the Muto took from San Francisco to Tokyo. I don't know why. Why, KDM? Why? What does that mean? In defense of the continuity of this show, which is something I was really critical of when they announced it, he points out that in Godzilla King of the Monsters, the TV says Godzilla hasn't been seen for five years. This show is set in 2014, which means he can do a lot of stuff in the year 2014. As long as he disappears by the end of 2014, that line still makes sense. Mark believes Godzilla has been lost, but Coleman says only if you don't know where to look, which implies that Monarch knows where Godzilla's been at, which of course we knew that. It's implied in that movie that Monarch knows where Godzilla has been the whole time. They have advanced data tracking on Godzilla and are not surprised at all by his appearance at Outpost 54. They're instead surprised by his behavior and proximity to Outpost 54. In a KDM exclusive, he states that this will start after the San Francisco battle and discusses the impacts and changes on the world. The show is about a family who sets out to find their connection to the secret monarch and tries to reveal something deeper. This show will take a deeper look into Monarch's past and plans and discover that there are not only good people working for Monarch. I don't know what that means in particular. Maybe it's a setup for like Alan Jonah's terrorist group who takes over in Godzilla King of the Monsters, or maybe it's like an Apex reference. I would guess that it's probably something self-contained for this show that would probably continue as this show builds on. There might be more seasons. This show also might have impacts that we see in the future Godzilla and Kong movies. So it's potential that this show will start a new story arc that we will see develop and that these bad guys working in Monarch might have something to do with that. We will see other monsters, including ones we've only heard of but have never seen. <laughs> Insert your Bryce jokes here. These are the other MonsterVerse beasts that were teased in King of the Monsters but never seen, maybe also never seen in the comic books. But Toho is producing this show, so maybe they will add in some Toho monsters if they want. Here's a direct quote from this translation. Also, these are all translated from German, so I don't know what this means. It states, you will get to see Godzilla, Godzilla 2014, and also Kong Skull Island 2017 are awesome. What does that mean? I don't, what, I don't understand what that means. Maybe it means that we'll see some references to Kong Skull Island, which we do know and we'll talk about in later videos. And hopefully that means that we'll see the 2014 Godzilla design. I, I don't know it. I mean, we better see the 2014 Godzilla design. That's when this show is set. It shouldn't be the King of the Monsters Godzilla design, but I, I don't know what that means. He clarifies once again that the series is coming out alongside movies and not in replacement of movies. Warner Bros. has no involvement in this show. There are 10 episodes planned for season one. That's two more episodes than I would have loved, but I do like that they say season one because maybe that means we'll get more seasons in the future. They are trying to build a connected universe and story over the next few years that expands the MonsterVerse overall, so we could see this show have direct implications and impacts on upcoming movies, which would be fantastic. I am all for a connected story as long as it's connected in loose enough ways to make each story stand alone on their own as a perfect whole story with just teases about the overall arc. I think Adam Wingard's smart enough to make sure that happens. About the main characters, there are males, females, and children, and between two to three main Monarch employees. Also, he says here that the Skull Island animated series is still coming out. In regards to Dr. Sarazawa, we have some information. Originally, back in 2019, the show was going to simply be called Monarch, but is now undergoing the working title Hourglass. I know a lot of people are still referring to it as Hourglass. I think it's probably just going to be called Monarch. I think that's probably what it'll be. If you want to hear why they would go under the working title Hourglass instead of Monarch, you can go watch my previous videos where I explain in detail why they would do that. Casting was started and filming was scheduled for May for a five-month shoot. That would be from roughly May to November. I think it actually shot a little longer than that, but hey, they were almost on track. This show was stated to have a budget of around Stranger Things. It is in the double-digit millions per episodes. Now, I don't know what season of Stranger Things that refers to. Could be season three or four, because both had double-digit budgets. But seeing as though this was posted in January 2022, I would assume it means it's somewhere on the lower end of this range, because that could mean it's anywhere from 10 to $30 million 
$1,000 an episode. That places the overall series budget at between $100 million and $30 million. In my previous videos from last year, I was talking about a lot of rumors that stated that this show would have somewhere around a $12 million budget, between $12 to $15 million per episode. The US and Japan are both primary locations for this show, and biggest news of all, Ken Watanabe, who plays Dr. Sarazawa in Godzilla 2014 and King of the Monsters, and was leading Monarch at the time this show takes place, was contacted about a potential return. Should he decline, the role would either be changed to a different character, Sarazawa would be recast, or the role would be completely deleted and the show would be rewritten. This show will star mostly new characters with only a few cameos. The following article that KDM posted states that Sarazawa was replaced. There will probably be no Sarazawa, other than maybe, maybe, maybe a teeny tiny cameo, but probably no Sarazawa. This is an idea that came from 2019. They wanted Sarazawa back when the show was originally pitched, but this has changed to a newer character who bears many similarities to Dr. Sarazawa, which is actually something I pointed out in my last video on this topic. There's a character with similar age who values work more than anything else, is a researcher who works on satellites, technology, and monarch, and his name is Hiro, or Hiroshi. He is the one who commutes between Tokyo and San Francisco. He is a character with a lot of presence, but he is a side character. We have some filming details. It was slated to shoot in Vancouver, Canada, the US, Tokyo, Japan, and Hawaii, specifically Kalawa Ranch and Oahu. I don't think I said that right at all. The exciting part of that is that Kalawa Ranch in Hawaii is where they shot a lot of Kong Skull Island, specifically the Boneyard sequence, and the Boneyard still exists as a practical set, so maybe there is some hope that we will revisit Skull Island, and that's what the previous Skull Island tease was in relation to. That would be awesome. And again, this was scheduled to shoot from May to November of 2022. Godzilla and multiple original Titans are slated to appear in the show. New characters, plus a potential cameo character or two, are going to appear. And again, this is something that I had already talked about, but Apple TV Plus offered more money than HBO Max, Netflix, or Amazon, which is why they got it. Directors were contacted as of January 25th, and KDM points out that he teased this show as far back as 2019, and then mentioned it again in October 2021 as a way to build credibility. This show is supposed to start production in 2020, but COVID stopped that, and then the producers wanted to wait to see how Godzilla vs. Kong did before moving forward with their plans. KDM did a picture puzzle, which is something I guess he does, teasing that the show will have a female main character, and that the main locations will be between North America and Japan. Alright, this is the big one that KDM posted, all the hourglass details. This is the one that we talked about in that previous video a year ago. The show is supposed to have six main characters. Now these are six main new characters, they're also the Japanese cast, and I'd like to point out that this isn't a complete cast list. As we will talk about in later videos, other main cast members have been added to this show. These are just the six that were relevant at the time because these were the six being casted at the time. There are six main characters, Kate, Mei, Kentaro, Emiko, Kaiko, and Hiroshi. If you want to hear me break down all of these character bios and what they could mean for the show, go check out the previous video because I will do a much more in-depth talk about it. In this one, I'm just going to hit the base points. Kate is a young Japanese American who goes to Japan and discovers her family has a connection to Monarch. She is trying to find out about her secret past and personal connection connection to Monarch. Kentaro is a Japanese man who goes from London to Japan who is inside the plot and is trying to figure out the mystery about his father and his father's connections to Monarch. I wonder if those two characters will be related at all. I don't think so. Kentaro's mother is Emiko. We don't know much about her. Kentaro's father is Hiroshi, a scientist who values his job more than his family and is inside the plot. I think that just means they're main characters who are relevant to the show. Mei is a young woman who is super smart and is always two to three steps ahead of all the other characters. And then the characters all meet as they realize that time is running out and that the new world where monsters exist will bring a quote-unquote big chance. I'm not sure what that big chance is, but I think it means a big threat of destruction. Godzilla and the Mutos are not the only monsters whose existence has been kept a secret. May I also believe it's supposed to be a British African-American female? That's at least what I said in my previous video. The series will be split between London, San Francisco, Tokyo, and more, with one main character splitting his time between Tokyo and San Francisco, while another character quote-unquote returns home. This journey from San Francisco to Tokyo is one we've seen mentioned a couple times. Kate moved from America to Japan in this show, Kentaro goes from London to Japan, and Kentaro's father specifically goes from San Francisco to Tokyo. To end it all off, we have details about the next MonsterVerse movie. These are also teased by KDM. Screen Rant posted an article way back in the day teasing that Space Godzilla would appear in the next MonsterVerse movie. KDM warns that this article was complete clickbait and that we shouldn't expect Space Godzilla in the MonsterVerse. Now that is still relevant to this day. KDM has been going on a rampage in the past couple weeks trying to disprove or tell everybody that all these articles about Space Godzilla and the MonsterVerse are false. I wouldn't get your hopes up for Space Godzilla, guys. All these supposed leaks are so easy to make up. Just don't fall for it. Unless you have credibility like KDM, Toho Kingdom, Gormoru Island, or even to some degree Kaiju News Outlet or me, <laughs> I wouldn't trust this stuff. Ugh.
All right, we're done. <laughs> my throat hurts and I'm tired of talking. I want to give a huge thank you to my patrons on Patreon. They are keeping the channel running. I truly mean that. They really are. If you want to support the Patreon, you can use the link in the description below where you can get early access to content, access the Discord community, and more. Overall, I just want to give a big thank you to you guys for sticking with me through this one. Again, if you want more in-depth discussions about the story and about the legal aspects and everything, go check out those previous two videos I made last year. They're good ones. They really are. I just watched them. They still hold up. <sighs> Other than that, guys, that'll do it for this one. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed. I'll see you guys next time for the next one. D-Man, out.